Warning, this video does contain constant stuttering, so viewer discretion is advised. Before the video starts, I just want to mention that subtitles are available, so in case I mispronounce a word, you will have subtitles on to correct any error. You can also check me out on my socials, which will be linked in the description below. Thanks for listening and enjoy this video. Hello everyone and welcome welcome back to the channel. My name is The Horseman and in this week's video we will be going over the brief history and the many changes behind the iconic cover design for Michael Jackson's seventh studio album, Bad, released in 1987. The cover of Michael Jackson's Bad album is as iconic as the music it represents. The album was the highly anticipated follow-up to the groundbreaking success of Thriller. With the world eagerly waiting, Jackson was faced with the challenge of not only meeting, but exceeding the, the astronomical expectations set by his previous work. The process of designing the album cover was equally an uneasy task. In July 1987, photographer Sam Emerson was chosen by Michael Jackson to capture the essence of what bad was meant to represent. Initially, the concept for the cover drew ins inspiration from a 1924 portrait of actress Gloria Swanson. This portrait characterized by its strong contrast, sharp focus, and the use of black lace to frame Swanson's face was intended to convey a sense of mysterious allure and glamour. However, this initial concept was rejected by CBS CEO Walter Yednikoff who felt that it did not appropriately convey Jackson's desired image. Yendikoff, who was a key figure in the music industry at the time, managing artists like Bruce Springsteen and the Rolling Stones, saw a more urban and edgy re representation of Michael Jackson. Emerson ultimately opted for a different approach that aligned more closely with his themes of the album. The photograph that was selected featured Jackson dressed in the outfit he wore in the short film for the title track, Bad. This assemble included black trousers and a jacket adorned with buckles, buttons, and metal details emphasizing a tougher, more street-wise image. The decision to use a white background for the cover was deliberate in ensuring that nothing detracted from Michael Jackson's figure and the bold statement his wardrobe made. Additionally, Jackson wore light brown contract lenses for the, sh for the shoot, which contrasted his with his dark clothing and added a glossy, almost otherworldly quality to his gaze. The title of the album Bad was added to the top right corner of the cover in a red graffiti style lettering, a design choice that further emphasized the album's urban and rebellious theme. Jackson's name was placed vertically along the far right side of the cover in a stylized aerial font with certain letters slightly smaller than the rest giving the design a modern, almost industrial feel. This combination of elements, the, the, the graffiti, the stark white background, and the intense gaze was all part of Jackson's effort to connect with inner city youth and portray himself as someone who understood their struggles. The final design for the album cover was the work of Jeffrey Spear, a cartoonist and graphic designer from Virginia. Spears' design for the word bad was inspired by graffiti seen in the short film for the title track, while the lettering of Jackson's name was kept simple yet impactful. The album cover was part of a larger visual package that included a series of photographs by Matthew Rolston, showing Jackson dressed entirely in black with an in-camera lens effect adding a dynamic flair to the images. In essence, the cover of Bad is not, is not just a photograph, but a carefully crafted statement that encapsulates Michael Jackson's ambitions to evolve as an artist and assert his place in the changing landscape of popular music. It reflects his desire to be seen as a tougher, more street-wise street figure, while also showcasing his unpropelled attention to detail in every aspect of his work. Bad went on to make history as the first album to produce five number one singles on a Billboard Hot 100. The album's success was accompanied by a series of groundbreaking short films to match each single from the album. These visuals further solidified Jackson's image as a global icon who was constantly pushing the boundaries of music, dance, and fashion. 
Well, folks, that's the end of today's video. I hope I kept y'all informed. This video was actually made back in May during my hiatus. I was trying to stock up as many videos I, as I could make, but then, but then suffered from writer's block at the time. I'm currently working on a script for the deep rabbit hole of fake Michael Jackson leaks, along with the third installment of my Unreleased Explained series. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and, and subscribe and ring the bell icon so you, won't, so you won't miss my latest videos. I also created a Discord server, so feel free to join to get any updates, any and all updates regarding the channel or anything Michael Jackson related. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.